Hello everybody! Today I am going to be going over what I consider to be the basics of Voxel Sniper. If you don't know what Voxel Sniper is, it's a paintbrush-like tool that allows you to sculpt and mold things very easily. It's extremely useful for sculptures, organics, terrain, and it can even be used on structures if you get a little bit creative. I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started with this plugin. Okay, so the first thing you need are your brushes. I have an arrow and gunpowder, and those are the only two brushes that you're going to be needing for voxel. The important thing to note about these brushes is that they are opposites of each other. So whatever I set my arrow to do, the gunpowder will do the exact opposite of that. Okay, let's get started. I want to start with a pretty basic command. I'm going to type slash B for brush, and then I want to set it to do something. So if I want to set it to place a ball, I type a B. Now it sets a ball, but of course by default, my block is air and my size is three. So it set a sphere into the ground. I'm going to undo this by typing slash U. Okay, now that we have our brush set to make a ball, we want to choose the block that we want to use. For this, we type slash V. I want to use gold blocks, so I'm going to type slash V41. That's the ID of gold blocks. Now when I click, I get a little sphere of gold blocks. But maybe I want a larger sphere. Well, if I want the sphere to be larger, I can type slash B and then a number. So this is the same as setting our brush, but now instead of typing a letter for the brush type we want, we just type a number. I'm going to do 8 for a much larger sphere. You can do whatever number suits your needs. If I want to undo what I just did, I can type slash U and then a number. So I just did three actions, so I'm going to type slash U3. And it gets rid of all three actions right away. I don't have to spam slash U. Okay guys, so this is where things get just a little bit more complicated. Let's say I want to place a block that has a data variable, as in maybe a color or a wood type. Maybe I want to use red wool. Well, the ID for red wool, as you can see on my screen, is 3514. But if I type slash V 3514, Voxel doesn't understand that ID the same way that WorldEdit does. I need to type the data variable separately. But before I do this, I need to enter a performer. Now performers go after your brush. So right now I have BB for ball, but after this goes the performer. Right now it's on M. M stands for material. This means it just places one material. I want to change my performer to be C, which means combo. This means that I can add in a data variable. As you can now see on my screen, the blue data variable is zero right now. So now I can get my wool type that I want. So I type V35 for wool, and then I type VI14, so I get the red wool. And there we go, and I can change this data variable to get different color wools. just like so. There are many different brush types that you can use, and I recommend looking through a list of voxel brushes and find the one that's best for you. But I'm going to show you guys two more that I use very often. So we already did the ball. I use that one quite a lot. But I also use the cube. So for a cube, you would type slash B and then a V. And now we have a cube of wool. Of course, my performer is still on uh, material, I need to switch that to C so that I can get my colored cube. Just like so. Another thing I use is the splatter brushes. What a splatter brush is, is it basically adds air between the shape that you're getting. So if I want to have a splatter cube, I would type S in front of my V. And now you can see it's, it's definitely splattered, right? <laughs> I can do the same thing with a ball. This is one that I use very often for tree leaves. B, S, B, C, and maybe we'll change our V to 18 now. And you can see that I get nice big circles of leaves. Of course, normally I use a much smaller brush size, something like this. 
very easy to place leaves with. Okay, on to the next thing. Okay guys, so let's say I have this clay ball here and I want to paint the terrain around here this color. Well, I need to use my performers for that. So I'm gonna set my ball BB and I had it on C for combo, but now I need a number after the C for my replace material. I'm gonna type M because the material I'm gonna be re replacing is stone. B, B, C, M. You can see that my performer is now set to combo and material. Now, when I click on the ground, it doesn't do anything. That's because I haven't set my replace material. To do this, you can type slash B, R, and the replace material, which in this case is one, or you can simply shift and click to set your replace material. And now it goes super easy. And the shift clicking is something I recommend you do because I can shift as I'm going and replace any material that I want if I want to change. I just simply shift, click to replace it. And now the world is pink. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay guys, so now we've got this little mountain over here and I'm gonna be demonstrating the erode brushes on it. So to start, we're gonna get one typed in to our arrow here. So we start with slash B E. So brush erode. And now I want to pick the erode brush that I want. I'm going to be going with lift for this one. So now this brush will lift up any material in front of it. In the radius that I've chosen, my brush size is currently five and I can use this to shape my terrain the way that I want it. And this right here is where it comes in handy to have your gunpowder doing the opposite. So our gunpowder right now is going to be set to melt without us even doing anything because it is the opposite of our arrow. So the gunpowder now, now allows us to melt away at this terrain without typing in any extra commands. This is really useful for making mountains, for sculpting, for doing basically anything with organic things. It's extremely helpful. Another command is B E fill. This one fills in the area oh, similarly to lift, but it's not lifting anything up. It's aiming to fill in the area around there. So it's a little cleaner, a little less jagged and overall a really nice command to have. The next command, which I find extremely useful for smoothing is B B B. This is the blend ball. Now this is a very useful command for smoothing. Don't overdo it though. That is my only tip when smoothing using this. Although it is way better than World Edit Smooth, it can overdo it and you'll get this staircasing Terra. To combat that, you can see that my brush, because it's set to the opposite of that, is now lifting up. I'm gonna do slash B E lift and to combat the amount of smooth that this is being set to, I'm gonna be using my melt brush to actually just kinda mess this up a little bit. And with enough effort and work, you can actually get a really nice pattern going on your landscape. I, of course, am just gem demonstrating this, so I'm not gonna work on this mountain a whole lot. Okay guys, the last brush that I'm gonna be showing off in this tutorial is the line brush. So for the line brush, we're gonna type slash B and then L. I'm gonna type an M after that for material. It's just our performer like we've been talking about before. So now we have a line brush. With this, we're gonna right click on our arrow to set our first position and our gunpowder to set our second position. And it draws a line. To demonstrate this a little better, I'm gonna use world edit to go up one. I'm gonna pick a spot right there and down here. And you can see that wherever I click this, it draws a line from that point. This is extremely useful for marking out things in organics, and I use it very often, particularly for dragon wings or for marking out builds where I just, I don't wanna place a line. And you know, sometimes it's a pain to get from point A to point B, say if point B is over here, and you can't figure out exactly how to get a nice line over there. Voxel does it very well, and I really like that these, these lines that it creates. Okay guys, that is all for this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and you learned something. 
I know that I did not cover very much of this very extensive plugin, but there are a lot of commands in this and it would be so difficult to cover it all in one video. If you guys want something specific covered, please leave it in the comment section below as although I do plan on doing a lot of voxel tutorials in the future, I may not hit on exactly what you want. I plan on showing you guys how to mold organics better and how to do terrain with voxel just a little bit more specific than what I went over today. This video is basically just getting you guys introduced to the concept of voxel if you've never used it before. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!